This episode is sponsored by Cube Gallery, a progressive art space in Cebu, Philippines. They provide network and exhibit opportunities for contemporary artists, and they work closely with artists to promote them beyond the local reach. For more than five years, Cube has mounted shows of engaging artworks and have also significantly represented the Visayas region in various international fairs. You know, I know for myself that I believe Cube Gallery is one of the first places here in Cebu that introduced the idea of a, co- a contemporary art gallery to me, to me personally. They're one of the first that I remember seeing. And since then, a lot has changed in Cebu. All of a sudden, I feel like, I don't know, it, it might be my perception or it might be the way that the times are now, but there's a lot more art in Cebu right now and a lot more, in. I mean, in my eyes, a lot of interesting art. And the uh, Cube Gallery is one of those places that, that has helped spark this movement or this community here in Cebu. So kudos to Cube Gallery. If you want to send them a message, email them at info at cubegallery.ph or send a message to their Facebook page at Cube Gallery. That's Q-U-B-E-G-A-L-L-E-R-Y. Let's get to the show. Welcome to 032 Conversations, the podcast where we talk to creatives, see how they live, and how they do their work. I'm your host, Carlo Villarica. Uh, I don't know about you. Um, I generally don't buy myself a lot of stuff. So, for example, my shoes. Generally, I buy a new pair of shoes when the old pair dies or, you know, it's not meant to be worn anymore. I had this one pair that had like holes in them and then for whatever reason, I still decided to wear them and I just decided, I was like, it's probably about time to buy a new pair of shoes. But so, I don't buy a lot of stuff and when I do, it it usually takes me weeks to months, sometimes years of deliberation so I'll I'll research a lot online. I'll I'll kind of be mini obsessive about it. It takes me a while. I have to in fact, not only do I need to know exactly what I'm buying, there's a self talk that I end up doing. I have to reason myself into the purchase, like why am I buying this thing? And when I was in the US, I bought myself a new bike frame. It's a for the bike geeks there it's a midnight special it's called it's a it's a surly midnight special it's from this brand called surly and whoo i am excited I, I i brought it out to a few rides over the week and and i i, I can't wait to bring it on a long grueling crazy ride and i just i can't wait i mean the the, the weather is a bummer because it's been raining a lot but I'll tell you the reasoning on why I got the the, the bike. I'll, I'll start from the very beginning. From the very beginning. So I bought my first bike. It was a single speed. I bought it, I bought it in September 2017. Uh, a couple of days after my second born. <laughs> after my second born uh, child was born. <laughs> and then it's my first bike. It was a single speed. It was super cheap. Super low commitment. I think it was like 11,000 pesos. And then the reasoning was for that bike was I wanted to give commuting with a bicycle a try. I was so fed up sitting in my car, atrophying my body, and then wasting so much time. So I decided try getting a bike. See what that you know if we can if Makaya Gudni if if we can do this in Cebu. And I I used it mostly for the first year, really just commuting. I didn't really do any real quote unquote cycling things like going up mountains, going far, just to exercise. At some point when I was commuting, you can't help it but but learn more about the bicycle culture here in Cebu. I learned that you know that Cebu has a lot of mountains, kind of hard to go up mountains on a, on a single speed. So I borrowed my friends' bikes. I borrowed a mountain bike, I borrowed a road bike, went up mountains, and it was super fun. So, again, 
I was like, oh, maybe I should get another bike. <laughs> so on October 2018, I bought my first uh, geared bike. It, you know, because the 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 first bike, my commuter bike, was a single speed, so only one gear. And the problem with a single speed bike is that you can't really, you can if you're, you know, you had legs, like crazy strong legs. You you can't really go up a mountain. You can't change gears. So it's really difficult going up a mountain. So I decided I bought my first geared bike. It was a gravel bike. It was a Jamis Renegade Exile. It wasn't too expensive. I mean, a little bit obviously more expensive than the first one. I think it was like on discount, 24K, something like that. And then the whole idea was this was like this was an experiment to see if I would enjoy cycling. Like really cycling, like going out you know, 50, 100 kilometers or going up these crazy mountains, going up 1,000, 2,000 meters, that sort of thing. And then, that, so it was an experiment for that. If I didn't like doing it, then, you know, it sucks. I, I spent some money, but I would sell it and no, it's, it's fine, right? But turns out, turns out I do enjoy it. So to give you an idea, so my first bike, the 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 single speed which I turned into a fixed gear once I had the second bike. That one has accumulated over since 2017 over 4,000 kilometers. The gravel bike, which is much newer, has 3,800 kilometers under its belt. So it's done. It I've used it just a uh, a lot more. I've used it a lot. It's crazy. Like uh, I've used it a lot. So. So it turns out I like cycling, clearly. I mean, I talk about it in the podcast very often. Then the then the rationale for this, the Midnight Special Surly, a lot of it is emotional, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. Because, you know, the truth is I don't need another bike. The Jamis, the Renegade XL, it was fine, right? It was fine, but... I don't know, man. I just, you know, there are these decisions that, that in a way, it's kind of emotional. You just want it, and then I, I, the, the thing is with the Jamis, with the, with the, with the Renegade Exile, it wasn't something that I was gonna keep forever. And you know, minor things like it, it, it's probably it was probably a size too small. Um, it wasn't something that I was in love with. You get what I'm saying? Do you get what I'm saying? I wanted to get, you know, I, I obviously enjoy cycling and I wanted to get something that in my mind I would keep a lot of a lot I'll be honest, a lot of people roll their eyes when I say this, but this is some this is something that I will keep for a really, really long time. Probably the last bike that I will buy in a while. I really hope that's true because I I spent a little bit more than I wanted to for this bike. But you know, I went to the US and and they don't sell the bike here, and uh, I brought it in. It's uh, it's good. It's good. Anyway, I'm really excited for it. But also to save up on some cost, I basically just bought the frame, and then I moved most of the old bike parts from my Renegade Exile into the Midnight Special. Yeah, so you know, save a little money here and there. So what's what's so special about the 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 Midnight Special for the bike nerds? I don't know if you're gonna understand it, but I'm gonna like run through it really quickly if you're not interested in bikes at all but i mean you're listening this far in maybe you are a little bit anyway it's a road bike road bike geometry it feels like a road bike but you can fit big tires 700c by 40 max i think and then it fits better for me it's, it's like my size it looks beautiful in my opinion it's i love how it looks maybe in the future i'll paint it for a different color we'll see so it's a very versatile frame and you know Surly is a brand that is known to make bikes that last forever it's not the lightest it's not the fastest but uh, I don't need it to be the lightest or the fastest that's not what I want so yeah that's why I bought the frame long story short I like the bike I don't know I, I, I tend to justify my purchases and this is me just trying to justify that that purchase and uh, side note, the Jamis Renegade XL frame is for sale. If you are interested, you can send me a DM at Sober Musings on Instagram. 
And on a totally unrelated note, but is the main purpose of this episode. This episode is not about cycling. I interviewed Miriam Pakaira. Miriam is a copywriter and artist from Cebu. She lives for cats, crafts, and coffee. So Miriam used to have a brand called Thimble Cap. I think I met her back in the day when we used to when 032 used to organize bazaars. And she had these really cool, cute bags and and all um and all these other craft stuff. So I invited her to be a stockist in our it's a now it's it's now defunct. We had a 032 had a kiosk in JY Square a while ago. And we had to close it down. But it was interesting. So she was a stockist there. It was interesting to see her transition from Thimble Cap to her new brand, Peregrina. So Thimble Cap was a lot of like she was sewing a lot of stuff, making these bags, small wallets, that sort of thing. And now Peregrina, so it's more art focused. So I wanted to talk to her about that, especially because along the way, she slowly grew her Instagram account. Her Instagram's at Bored and Crafty, and then she grew it to 21,000 followers, all through the power of her art. Really, like if you look at it, it's it's photo after photo after photo of her beautiful artwork. And I wanted to talk to her about her work and how she does everything. Yeah, of course we were able to do that. But she also ambushed me in the beginning of the interview. So bear with me. If this is your first time to listen to 032 Conversations, please subscribe. We have a new episode every Tuesday. You can find us anywhere you can find podcasts. Let's get to that interview with Miriam Pakaira. With um, being in a band and um, hosting a podcast, they're, they're like the same way. I gather there'd be like there'd be differences or it's not the same. Um, I miss. I really miss being in a band. Because you know, being in a band, you're the star. Ah, uh, it's not about. Um, that's not what I thought about <laughs> okay. when you said being in a band. <laughs> because like being in a band for me was just an excuse to hang out with all of my best friends. There are easier ways to hang out with people. No, they, okay. You know how like men, you know how women uh, bond with each other, and they don't need really an excuse to be together. No, like, like women that. bond, like they talk, they have a constant. Uh, there's a lot of touch points, communication. Oh, there's an endless, endless stream of topics and whatever. Working on so like but I don't with know. Men. Well, anyway, so I don't know with you. Like, do you have like a viber group of all your friends? Not, Not really. really. I'm highly introverted, so. I don't know. Or like people. Well, anyway, like my wife. Mm. So she has a viber group with all her friends, and it's always like. Yeah, constantly pinging and whatever. It's yeah, always yeah. chatting, and then if you look at the viber group or Facebook group or whatever of my friends, it only lights up when something's happening. Some life changing thing. Um, I don't know a basketball game, <laughs> or okay. you know, because men. Men bond by doing stuff together. I guess. Yes, I guess that's true. Yeah, right. so like playing basketball. In my case, with my with my friends, we were like in a band. So, well, I mean, it was a really good way <laughs> to just hang out. So, okay. that's what I miss. Uh, the difference between being in a band and doing this podcast is, being in a band, I got to hang out with really all my good friends. Doing this podcast, I get to meet and Aww. reconnect with new, new interesting people who. I guess. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest. Well, that I get changes to pick, today because right? I'd be the least interesting person. No, I, don't think, I don't think you should give yourself that much pressure. <laughs> like honestly, it's totally fine. Like I, I, I generally invite people who I who I have a genuine um, curiosity about. Okay. Like I want to learn something from. Okay. So that that's my whole goal with the podcast. To be honest, oh, okay. like can I. Right. Like my my the list the listener that I have in mind is let's say some college kid or high school kid who doesn't know what to do and then is say is looking out there and just saying oh this person does this I wonder how they did it oh, okay Diba? right I guess have you ever oh you've done you do AMAs right so you talk about what you do your AMA ah oh, yeah and ask me anything yeah, yeah. okay. 
So, do you think you've inspired people to start podcasts? Maybe I don't. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> to start a podcast, I don't know. Um, although now I notice there are quite a number of here. Pod- and there's school? a few like Murag that just popped up in the last year or so. They have like Facebook groups or whatever. There's a there's a podcast Facebook group for local. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like Philip. I forgot what it is. I can look it up. It's like Filipino <laughs> podcaster or something. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, and then you know you'd be surprised. Like, what, there's this lady. I'm blanking on her name. Oh my, ah, I'm blanking on her name. But whatever. So, uh so she's probably the in terms of like Filipinos, she's probably the most downloaded podcast. Why? Like, what crazy, did she talk like, about? I'm, I'm. Bl- I'm not I'm not the demographic so I'm not I'm blanking because what she does is she interviews women mm. kanang um uh, you know strong women and oh, uh, like boss babes something like that yeah 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 <laughs> and then you know kanang so she 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 talks to them and she has a podcast every day every day yeah but it's really short like less than 10 minutes usually Still, like, you know, the production that goes with it. Yeah, you're contacting all these people. She has a team or she does it on her own. I have no idea. (laughs) Like I said, I'm not the demographic. But is that, like, your goal, podcast-wise? Like, to be... Well, you're asking a lot of of questions. (laughs) (laughs) It seems Um, interesting what you do more than what I do, so, you know. I I, I differ. I mean, I get to talk to people, Mm. really. that's For me, that's the most interesting thing. I get to talk to people. What was your question? I'm sorry. Is Um, that your goal? To be the most downloaded in Cebu at first? Um, No, no, no. The goal is to connect with Ah, people. Like, so... I think I've said this in an AMA before, but the, when I started this, it was, uh, I decided to just do six episodes. Oh, okay. So this was, this was supposed to be a short series or something. No, six episodes to see if I enjoy it. If I get anything out of it. But you're here today, so you... Oh, yeah. We're, we're at like... Uh, <laughs> this I've... is episode what? This episode is probably episode 70-something. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, so I've talked to more or less 70 people. <laughs> but no, but the, 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 Merk, the, the goal, I don't know how you are, but generally I find that if goals are, th- are things that you cannot control, like I cannot control how many people download this podcast. Mm. So... So the goal is, what is something that I can uh, control? control like is this something it's not really a goal but is this something that i can can get something out of in a in a sense nga, do i learn something that's something i can control do i enjoy it not necessarily something i can control but it's very clear if i don't enjoy it then i stop doing it i guess yeah. so number of downloads is not so that's not really something you think about so. i look at it because but well, it gives you information about how to do things or it does. Yeah. But I mean inherently we're all vain. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? I, I mean True. Yes. Y- yeah, like Okay, like I follow your I'm gonna try to put it to you now. I'm gonna <laughs> I follow your Instagram, Bored okay. and Crafty, right? And then I know that when I post something on on my personal account, you know, two hours later I'll be like, I wonder how that post did. You know, and I just just to see it. But it doesn't it doesn't change how I do anything. But I guess. I, yeah. I want to know the number. And then uh, for the number of downloads, it, it's important to me, Sad, because I want to see if people, if it's reaching people. Yes. Uh, yeah. Diba? Yeah. If and, like, must it more resonates uh, for some people or not? Or are yeah. you able to say segment your market or don't say market? Like, you know, what the you people mean? who listen to you, do you know if they're young or, you know? Oh, that's the problem. I have no idea. Really? No there are no tools for it. That's um, what's hap- What's happening with the podcast is that. Maria, this is really about me. Okay, <laughs> what's happening with the podcast? One good is that so you upload it, and then it's going to all of these servers. Yeah. So, you up- I upload it to a host, and then the host puts it to Spotify, puts it to iTunes. Puts it to Google Podcasts, puts it to YouTube. Uh, so lay lying a platform, and you don't get a, stats. Lay lying or... a platform, and then they, and then the host 
they don't give me stats apart from the, the downloads. Number of views, uh, yeah. Or yeah, let's... Yeah, but um, I think I can pay for. Ah, uh, so. But premium, I don't, data or, or yes, or, but I don't think uh, it includes age. Jess. but podcast Won't is still, that be an important like. It does. It is, but it's it's so new, man. Good. Like even if we listen to, do you listen to podcasts in general? Not, not really. Because really? you know, I'm a writer, so I can't listen to words when I'm writing. Oh uh, yeah, so, that's yeah, right. No, no, I'm, I'm the same thing. way. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. No, but anyway, like even the podcasts that are out there, um. The way they do data gathering is they have a survey, which oh, is super old school, diba? Right? Yes. Well, if you, you think know, about it. Have you have you done it or a survey? Yeah. No, I mean <laughs> you don't want to learn. <laughs> I've only been at it for like a year and but a half. But you've had seventy plus episodes. That should be like good enough. I uh, I I don't know. Um, I don't know. I haven't. Th- I haven't you could maybe gone that do you have sponsors? Or? Yeah, we get sponsors. Oh, that's nice. I mean, but also the sponsors. But don't they ask for your numbers? You... Yeah, I'll give it, but I give the numbers that I have, which oh, is right. downloads. Which is I don't... enough at this point for them. Yeah, Mark, what I have right now is approximations of who the listener is based on like our Facebook page, no, based no. on Google Information analytics. on location or. Um, no, actual look, no. Honestly, no. Because like, <laughs> Well, but it's safe to say mostly in Cebu. I guess. Safe, like, mm-hmm. based on the content. Oh, you might be surprised. Oh, no, man. Like, now my... The nice thing, the interesting thing with this podcast, with the podcast that I noticed, and one of the reasons why I kept going is there's a lot of feedback in a sense. Mm-hmm. So, what sort? So, for example, uh, this it came out last week. This is gonna date this. This is probably gonna come out two months from now. But... It came out last week, see, Shireel Gomez. I, oh, I, I know her. You know yeah, her. Yeah, yeah. Oh. So I interviewed her. Mm. And then uh, I or 032 not necessarily got the, the, the tags because, you know, we don't. I mean, sometimes people tag us, but more often than not, they tag the guest. Mm. No? Mm. And then she was sharing on her Instagram stories, like all the like conversations she got. Ah, uh, because oh, of the inspiring podcast. Oh, oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. now I want to get a bike, whatever it was. Well, her like, story is inspiring. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's so cool. Yeah. How do you meet her? Sorry, Shire? I'm the one acting, um, asking questions. She wrote for us for a while. Oh, all right. I thought uh-huh. I thought you met her through biking or. No, no, no. Like, I started cycling, then I realized... Oh, sorry, she's cycling. A, hmm. Yeah, biking. <laughs> I, I started biking, and I realized, I was looking at Strava, and she's a beast. She is. Yeah, so, you know, I thought that would be interesting. And she's organizing. Before we move on, can you state your name and what you do? <laughs> sorry. I'm Miriam, and I am a copywriter and painter. Okay, Miriam. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm so sorry. <laughs> huh? I don't know. It's okay. Oh, my God, so... I don't know how much of the first part. I'm the queen part. of segues, and you know. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's what a conversation is. Okay. You know, I can't remember when we first uh, met? met. I'm guessing it's katong that when we were still doing the zero three two bazaars. Was it? I'm guessing because you probably you probably sold for us, right? Yeah, we did. Yeah, katong diba? Cebu Fair. Most likely that was the first one. Really? Well, that's, I'm probably guessing before that you because of so? the blog connection, maybe. Ah, oh, you think so? I think so, yeah. No, but like, uh, like but you never uh, really did like events or stuff, though, and neither did we. Not yeah, that yeah, often. Yeah. So, more, um, I would guess it would be the bazaar. Well, around that time, kaya wala pa kayo bazaars. So, like, Park Mall did a bazaar, and then you did, and then yeah. So, di ha nagsubad. So. Oh, bida, bida, kay, and then that was mostly for like craft stuff. Yeah, diba? yeah, for like makers and ana. Oh, were you always like this crafty? You'd say, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've always been kind of like this. <laughs> you know what? Like, was it like did somebody in your family teach you or? Uh... No. Um. Well, maybe I come from an artistic family. Like my father can, you know, has good handwriting. That's not a basis for, <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> um, I'm from a I'm from a town in Samar, and we don't have an art, um, community or whatever. But um, I know for sure that my cousins can draw. 
and they're into making things. So mo- some of them are engineers because, you know, we don't have an art degree there. It's not offered in schools. So, yeah, I've always been, you know, tinkering and uh, cutting pipes, whatever, stealing my... my cutting pipes? Yeah, Can you kind explain of, kind that? of curtain rods and then I'd cut them and then I'd make like kind of wind chimes. Well, with curtain rods? Yes, kind of pipes, ah, your metal. So like yes. you, you put it like in different different lengths oh, and they have different tones. And then tones. Ako niya, yeah. And then chiller was at home parents. You know, what ko sa mga you know whatever. <laughs> I mean, I would assume that they were. This was grade school, maybe. So I would assume it'd be like a number. Oh, but they na kaya at least. No, you no? know, no. Some parents, I guess, kaya more what are you doing? I assume. <laughs> As, but were your parents like... They were okay with it. I don't know about so... Yeah, I, 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 I repeat this so often in the podcast sometimes, because like, especially like towards music. Mm-hmm. And murag, towards some, artistic pursuits. Yeah. yeah. Some uh-huh. parents are like... Mm. Or at least drawing. Let's say drawing. Some parents are like, Oh, you're ka And then oh, now, yeah. 2019, yes, you're <laughs> going Yes, very much so. <laughs> it's a very so, real job. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, well, yeah, I kind of went through that as well. So, kind of, like with and, your drawing and painting, yeah. Because so, I stopped. I I just picked up the paints like again, like say four years ago, four or five years ago. No way, really? Yes, yes, yes. I stopped for like a decade or so, and I like that. What made you paint? Wait, wait, wait. So you you were painting when I you were young? I grew up drawing, yes. Because mm. my sister can draw. I stole materials from her. She hated me for, for that. So, so I grew up drawing. And then, you know, the usual, you, you, you're you voluntold to join poster making contests. You know, the usual things when you're in grade school. But then I went to high school. I joined, you know, those, those usual contests. But then I couldn't study fine arts in college. Because, you know. Okay, well, as a summer? Well, as a summer, and, you know, the prospect seemed expensive when you think about it. And, what do you mean? Um, um, I, my sister studied architecture, and I kind of wanted to follow the footsteps, but UP lang akong I only took, a, took the upcut. I didn't apply anywhere else, mm. but then the architecture, the, mass, uh, the degree was, the program was offered only in Diliman, so, ah, yeah. Okay, and okay. I wanted to study here, so. They don't have that, they don't have architecture here? Until no, now? no. Oh, but okay. they have fine arts, actually. Now they do, right? Yeah. yeah or back but, then, wala, or? No, man, but, you know, that never really entered my mind, so, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, I took up psychology, and... So yeah, wala ako nag-draw for... But um, when I was in drawing during that decade or so, okay, I was making things. So I discovered, I rediscovered sewing, you know, making jewelry and things like that. That's how we met, because of my sewing brand. So. Mola, exactly. So yes. like, uh, hey, what happened? So what happened to Thimble Cap? Um, so that was about, the brand before, the, yeah, brand, like, the, the craft yeah, brand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So about four or five years ago, I rediscovered painting. And then... um. I also realized that it was easier to make products based on my paintings than actually sewing because like that took more time sewing and then um, sourcing materials, fabrics and things like that. So I went the easy way because I'm lazy like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, because um, when you really think about it, um, considering the Pareto principle, kind of like 20% of your time, yeah, of your eight, effort, can okay, result in 80% of the outcome. The so, 80-20 rule. Yeah, yes, yes. So, so following that, guys, you know, kind of, sure. painting is like less effort in my part, but then profit-wise and then like reach-wise, kay 80% compared to the sewing. I know. And like, you're also like a really good. Uh, Not really. Like, I don't know. Like there's a, it pops in my feed every time, and like I'm I don't. Sorry. Need, no, no, it's good. Obviously, I follow you for a reason. No, but okay. But that's interesting to think about that you chose which direction to go based on the Pareto principle, no? Yes. Why? Oh well, no, no, I'm just curious. So because obviously you um, enjoy doing. It's not like it's not like you're like. It's not like I you enjoy don't... sewing. Like it's yeah. not like I'm a factory or whatever. So, but can I? But you also enjoy painting, man. Said yes, I do. So and I guess I guess I don't know if it's weird, but because like I think a whole long goal of life is to be efficient. So you know, eighty twenty. <laughs> so right oh, now, yeah. like I don't know. <laughs> so oh yeah, you know, I mean, I discovered that when I read that four hour work week 
book of uh, Tim, Do you follow that? Tim or Ferriss. Do you 80, try it? No, the four, four day work week or. Do I have a four hour work week? Four day work week. The, no, no, the book is called Four Hour, four hour. Work Week. Oh, okay. But do I, follow, do I have a four day work? No, I mean, I work all the time. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem when you work for yourself. You yeah. work all the freaking time. That's true. But I've, I've learned to have, uh, do you, do, do you have that? Like, uh, the ironic thing about being able to work for yourself is you have to give yourself a schedule. Yes. Yes. So you have like a work schedule also. Especially now, when you work at home, right? Yes. Now that, um, when also one of the reasons I stopped sewing because I uh, I went back to corporate mm. like three years ago and around that time anyway so I had to stop sewing and I had to focus on the painted products but bagura ko nag work balik from home and now I try to follow a schedule because you know I mean it helps for you guys because like you have a uh, you have an office and you know no but I'm hardly here I'm th- you are hardly honestly, here honestly, uh, is this honestly, the first time you came here this week or no I was here beside another interview <laughs> a few days ago no but like this is this office is mostly for the for my assistant no oh you have an assistant yeah that's her this is hers this is hers <laughs> that's that's her table and then she ha- she she does a lot of things for me no and then um but uh. Yeah, like her, I might cut this out. But currently, I last I moved Mangut to Lahog, but we're gonna move back here. Okay, so you were here because I you was, lived here. I was here, I was, I lived here, then I moved back to Lahog, and then now it's hard to come here in the noon. But we're gonna move back here, so the the office still stays here. Oh, okay. What with the you know road closure and whatever. <laughs> but yeah, this office is really for my assistant and a place for me to record. Oh, interviews. Okay. okay. So actually, I've been thinking about having a podcast for a really long time. <laughs> so this became when the, the the assembly in JY closed. This this was like you know what this just, happened right after you closed, yeah, or oh, pretty okay. much like a month or two after. Oh, so this that was the catalyst, like. Well, just the, do no, it. the space, the space, the podcast. Oh, okay. mga, I don't know how many. See, it would be after. nice to have a separate place where you know live and for living and for working. Because I guess you're more productive if like you feel like you're going to an office. Or I think no, yeah, that's true. No, I, I I agree with that. Good, like katong. I don't know. Like, do you have in your house where I found that where I sleep, where I do leisure things like watch TV or whatever. It's a totally different yes, room yes, from yeah. where I work. Yes. It helps to have uh, my partner. <laughs> 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 he who must not be named, sorry. <laughs> See, he has his own office, like, oh. you know, like with all his setup and his paints and whatever. And I have my own space with a sewing machine and all that. So it's not in the bedroom. It's not in the living room. Oh. Yeah, it helps. So too. when you walk in there, you're like, I'm on work, work mode. mode. Oh, kana. Yes, kana. It's super shall. important. Yes. It's also important, I discovered just last year maybe, when you wake up and you want to start working, you take a shower first. Like, you know, you pretend ah, that you're going to an office. You pretend you're going yeah. to an office. So you shower first and then you have coffee and anaba, like routine or ana. Yeah. Yeah. You're more productive that way. Yeah, so kind of like that's the ironic thing about working for yourself. If you feel like working for yourself and then you're in bed no. working on your computer, it doesn't work no, that way. No, it does not. I mean, like it's probably like lingao for like a day or two, but then after that, kay mer na siya. It's not mm-hmm. fun. No, because no, it's not just not fun. You re- you're less productive. True, true, true. You realize good nga you can't um kanang. But it's some psychological thing. Well, it's all about conditioning. Like, I oh, yeah, that's true. Kana yeah. sad. No, I mean, I have, I, I have an office chair. You know, the office. You know, things like that. Oh, yeah. So when you sit there, <laughs> work That's mode, probably the know. button. You're yeah. on. Yes. And yes. That. Well, you know, ideally. Oh, yeah, yeah, but Mona, that helps you, <laughs> diba? Yes. I, I didn't want to gloss over this, but you mentioned that so you stopped drawing and then you only started drawing like four years ago again. Yes. What made you this? What what made you aside from the Pareto principle? Wh- why did you decide to start drawing again? Well, Instagram maybe I was inspired again because um around four years ago, 
four or five. So Instagram was growing, and then I started following artists, and you know, like, hey, I used to do that, and why don't I do it again? So I did just that, and um, I stopped maybe. I don't want to. I don't want to say why I stopped because I'm gonna. I'm, I'm gonna have to mention someone. But <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um. So I I started. I picked up the. I picked up paints and drawing again because. Sorry, the set effect. No, 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 no. Keep going. No, I, I have to look at it because I have what? to make sure uh, it's recording. It's okay. happened. Uh, it just stopped. Why? I, like I'm. I'm. I like run a power out of battery surge or... or something. Like I'm right. bad with batteries sometimes. <laughs> uh, it's it's hard being a one man show. <laughs> anyway, sorry. So you're saying? So um, around four years ago, kay, um, okay, I started the crafting journey, mga fifteen, sixteen years ago, mm. and then when I started, there were only like maybe three or four local brands, papers and chai. You know Chai? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, chai, okay. yeah. You should interview Joke. <laughs> Joke, oh, yeah, she no, will yeah, not chai. enjoy it. <laughs> she does I've spoken like to her. It. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there was Papers and Chai and me and Strozzi. There were only like a couple of brands or handmade brands. And then um, it was difficult at that time because there were no um, stores that sold mm-hmm. materials. Yes. And then around four years ago, I was going to sell paints and papers and brushes. And then, you know, that sort of inspired me to explore it again so i oh, really like you're yes. just going in shops and you're like oh i used to draw i used to draw and or like, um it was safe safer to shop online so mm. Mm. so, must so you shaba. had that in your head now for the longest time that you wanted to draw you, you just decided i'll do it again well it's kind of like it's always been there and then i guess i was so sure i'd pick it up again i just didn't know it was that time so i don't know Mm. And then I realized, that, hey, I can make people, may, maybe people will pay me to do this. And then some people did, thankfully. So that's part of who I am now. That urged you to keep going. Yes. Well, not exactly. Not the money uh, not part. Really. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but like, it gave you it was, encouragement. Yes, ba? yes, yes. Like, you know, everybody needs validation, like you said. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're all, we're all human. <laughs> like, like, I don't like to admit it, but I'll be like, hey, cool, this, this, yeah, this little like, photo got couple of hearts on Instagram. Yeah, which is kind of like sad in a way. To, it to, is, it is, it is. Right? Like, yeah. But then when you think about it, people who are interested, who could be, in, who are potentially interested in what you do, they look at how many other people look like your work. So, you know, that I want to put in life, like, to do the, the kind of following in you, or I don't know, uh, I mean, like, that's true, but you know there's it's a, sad. It's but sad, then, but you know there was that news. Guy, Instagram was going to. Tr- they're starting to um, experiment with like taking the number. So they like when somebody hearts something mm-hmm. on Instagram, mm-hmm. and then it shows the number of the number of people who heart 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 it like it. No, oh. they're going to experiment with taking the number the out. actual number. Yeah, so if now it's just a heart. Okay. So I guess you will know. Is it your account? The owner, oh, yeah. Yes. But if you look, but from other people's perspectives... They don't know. It's just like, oh, it's just a picture. Maybe there's a the button for a heart, just to okay. let you know. Which is like, I think it's a really good idea, personally. I guess, yeah. No? Nice one. I think so. Will, will they do it? Is that like they're, is they're that like, like um, an official news they, from Instagram? The, the, or? The, the article that came out was they're experimenting about it in Canada. Okay. <laughs> so we're kind of, but that one of those one some of those one of those countries. Okay. And yeah, then they'll see what happens. Okay. No, because it's a real thing. Like what we're talking it is, about. Yes. Like, kanang, mm. Kita, we're talking about like we're. Fortunately, it seems like we're balanced human beings. <laughs> so other, <laughs> we don't need the the val- we don't. The need the validation from social media, but there are people who get their validation. That's true. And then their their personal worth from that, which yes. is not nothing against them, but that's not a healthy thing. It's ba? not. Yes. Diba? Yes. Hmm. But um, me as 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 an artist who doesn't have an agent, mm. but yeah, social media helps. Oh yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, social media helps, and um. I guess, I don't know, I can't really say about Instagram because, like, it's so hard to figure things out on Instagram, like, algorithm-wise and whatever, what they're doing there, things like that. So, 
I don't know. I don't know why I don't. I don't know why I have that much followers. <laughs> yeah, well, it should be noted. Number one, speaking of, let's let's. Look I don't know at what your... I did. So no, I know what you did. I what did I, I do? know what you did. Um, so like, if in case you're listening and you have no idea what her Instagram account is, but she's too shy to say what it is, it's at bored and crafty. I, I'll link to it in the show notes, but. You have like twenty one thousand followers. I guess. No, Be- I know <laughs> yes. what you did because what you because you you just. I don't think I think a lot of people focus on the wrong thing. Mm. Like okay, the algorithm, ana ana, or like you're supposed to be, you're supposed to do this, ana ana. Actually, I feel like you just do you, and then what you want to do, and in your particular case, what you want to do is. Paint these beautiful uh, paintings. Paint these beautiful paintings. That's a wonderful <laughs> sentence. Uh, but you know, you get what I'm saying, right? Yes. Then, these beautiful things, ba. And then it, and then, and these twenty one thousand followers have have, kanang deemed it like they really like it, and people follow because of that. It's not about an algorithm. It's not about like oh, dapat imong content ing ani or dapat imong picture ing ani. I guess um I guess if you're just starting out and um you're an artist and you want to be and you want to have like hey I want a thousand followers or two thousand or whatever. I guess um they might think they might Google how to how to have like this much Instagram followers or whatever. I want to say that you know don't pay for them and like oh, don't definitely <laughs> don't. Oh yeah 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 that's I, I didn't even go there. <laughs> And um, I agree with you. It's not about the understanding the algorithm or whatever. Just you know, paint what you want to paint, or you put out what you want to put out, and then it will resonate with some people, and then they'll follow you, and then the rest. It's just gonna snowball, and then you know. Yeah, I mean, like that. Um, but also the flip side is true, huh? Like sometimes you can have art that you think is okay. But then the rest of the world don't care. Yeah, doesn't care. Which is really the vast majority of people is like that. But you shouldn't take that like personally. Exactly. Say, that's not that's not your worth as a person. So you know. yeah, exactly. So can I, well, when did you start your Instagram account? Like four or five years ago? Maybe I don't know. It started as a um, an extension of the blog. Oh. So it started like a crafty thing with my sewing, etc., etc. So. Yeah, do you still have the blog? No, not anymore. I should look for it, Bita. No, <laughs> it's dead. <laughs> the blog is dead. <laughs> so mm. yeah. why? Why? What happened? Yeah. Same, out of time, you know. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit more time consuming yes, to put up uh, a whole. Yes, then um, micro blogging works like by Instagram and Facebook. That works better, and um, you know, I mean, like congratulations, like last man standing. Oh, you... <laughs> on the website. <laughs> yes, <laughs> very good. <laughs> oh, okay, well, okay, yeah. I mean... Is it okay? Um, is it okay? Is there like a decline on the? No, because uh, they say that blogging is dead, and I don't know if it's dead because, like, I stepped out before the 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 whole blogging is dead thing came about. No, so. because before we used to get a lot of uh, traffic, mm. but you know, here's my thinking, my good with uh, and this is one of the reasons why I started uh, podcasting because, uh, so when we started zero three two was about Cebu restaurants, mm-hmm. travel places, yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever, and then I remember that whenever I go abroad. So let's say I go abroad and I want to look for like uh, best coffee shops, mm. coffee shops in Singapore, for example. I was in Singapore a few uh, a year ago or something. So I went to Singapore, best coffee shops in Singapore. There was this really good website showed me a list of like really good coffee shops. It's just a blog, or it was like, just a blog. Oh, it was just yeah, a blog, yeah. or okay. yeah, it was a blog. And then I kept going back to that page, huh? Because I was like. Okay, where's the address? What's oh, this? Yeah, yeah. Which one am super, I going super to? Yeah, Google Maps. And then I kept going back to it, kept reading all about the, the coffee shops, etc., etc. And then after the trip, I realized I don't even know what the website is. Oh. <laughs> like, I don't... I mean, I found a piece of Google, clicked on the link, and it just stayed in my tab. Yeah, okay. So I had... I visited that site so many times, gave them a couple of page views... But I had no idea what the URL was. Which, you know, I mean, I, I already discovered this a long time ago, but like, it 
this is a good way to explain it, but which was like an eye an uh, a light bulb moment for me. Uh, if I'm like let's say zero three two dot com and I'm writing about restaurants, places to go, whatever, and then people find it genuinely useful, they might go to the site, but they don't know they what zero three two is about, or yeah, yes. or even remember what it is. Oh yeah, right? oh. So if you look at our like, if you look at our uh, Google Analytics history, some of the Really high ra- uh, in terms of page views are like about like Tabuan oh. or before before the third wave coffee shop was a hit. It was about it was a link about coffee shops. Yeah, we really just there's no third wave stuff, mom. So it was Starbucks, Coffee Bean, yeah, yeah. whatever it was. Ana, ana. <laughs> so that had a lot of page views also. So a few years ago, I, I I said we need to start. You know, we have to stand for something, and then. We when we started on zero three two, I wanted you. Uh, we were musicians, so I was like, "Oh, let's also include the music community." Ah, uh, you wanted to cover just about anything zero three two or yeah, at first, and then so, but a big part of it, the part that I personally enjoyed, was the music community, and then we discovered the more. Oh wow, wait, there's a lot more people in Cebu than we thought. There's uh, the art community. Mm-hmm. There's uh, now I know about the cycling community. There's this whole crafting thing, this whole like local entrepreneurship thing. Yeah, the startups, the tech people. Not even just the tech people. So there's the startups, yeah, the tech yeah. people. Anna. But there's also like people like anang lifestyle brands like uh, Strap, Deadways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of mga so it's there's a lot of things happening when the eye that that's the thing that, that we discover I discovered because of zero three two where it opened my eyes ba. But but we weren't standing for anything. So, Kato, when, we, when I decided, I've always wanted to do podcasts. So, that right now, podcasts are like the main content? It's of the, the only world. content. Oh, okay. Oh. It's the only <laughs> content that I do now. Like, I used to write a lot. Oh. Yeah, and you're kapoy. It's super kapoy. And then you have oh to have God. photos. And they have to be photos you took yourself. Because, like, you know, you can't just copy from Google. So, like... Listen, so, okay. yeah, yeah, no, it was... Wow, it was a grind. It was <laughs> such a grind. No? So, but also the podcast allows, because I wanted to like feature people. But if you want to do like a New York Times 1,500, 2,000 word feature of a person, it's hard to do. Well, like that style. Sure. I mean, like, it's possible if like you get paid to do it. And then, you know. Yeah, kind of said, like, so a lot of people don't read na, so the return is small. So the podcast was a nice. Okay, that's, yeah. that's, that's, I should adapt that, like, you know, be adaptable. Like, right now, I guess more, more and more people are doing the YouTube tutorials and, you know, like Skillshare. And oh, whatever. yeah. Oh, oh. Cause I, I are actually, you doing that? No, because okay. I, I, I actually enjoy tutorials and teaching and, you know, workshops and whatever. But then, like, um, more and more people are gravitating towards, like, you know, videos, like Skillshare. Mm. And I don't know how to do that, so. Uh, or you know, like you know who also do. Like, well, I have some comic, comic artist friends. Mm-hmm. They'll do like, the streaming site, the gaming the streaming site that was bought by Amazon. Um, uh, Stream. Oh my gosh. We're not gamers. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I hate it when I have to Google stuff in the middle of an interview. It's like the biggest streaming site in the world. Twitch. Twitch, yes. Okay. There. So like <laughs> I was some, like at the tip of my tongue, so. Yeah, so Twitch, like they I have like friends, like they'll twitch their I mean their I, art as I well. guess my problem is like the talking and the explaining part, like yeah. articulating and do they have to talk or do they just draw and then people Sometimes watch? Sometimes they just draw. Okay. But for sure there's better if going back to the tactics part, the algorithm part and everything. For sure, there's better engagement when your face is there. Yes. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. you're talking, Anana. So this is the way I. Yeah, you explain do this you, your br- technique. I'm not an artist. <laughs> uh, like this is the brush that I use, and this is the technique. I'm yeah. dabbing the whatever it is. Dabbing what? The, the canvas. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so um yeah I I don't see myself doing videos. Maybe I don't know. So, well, I guess know, I'll stick to pictures. That's true. I mean, obviously, it's working for you. But like, going back to the Pareto principle, eighty twenty. I guess, yeah. Uh, so the yeah. writing was so hard. Kapwik, I yeah, like the return on writing was so difficult. For me, 
the podcast is the eighty twenty version. Is this the is the eighty twenty version of that? So this is just twenty percent of your effort. Yeah, like this is not hard. What we really? what, I, what I'm doing? <laughs> Good for you. Oh, yeah, because you, <laughs> oh, yeah, because you came in, you said you're like introverted. It's hard to talk. Really? You know, you'd be surprised. A lot of creatives are. This is very normal. With I found, I just realized after so many episodes. It's a lot of the creatives are very introverted. Good. Who are the most extroverted people you spoke with? You know, wait. Well, sige. Dif- diba, uh, I'll get the definition straight. Extroverted is you get energy being around people. Yeah. Introverted is. In words, uh, like. Yeah, or can you get energy being by uh, yourself? By yourself, yes. diba? It doesn't mean you're like unfriendly or antisocial. So exactly. So it after this, I'd probably crash. Are you? You? Yes, <laughs> I'd probably like after um. So I do workshops, art workshops. I teach watercolor, and um, after that's two or three hours of you know talking about techniques and uh. your paper and whatever. After that, I won't talk for like three hours. I'd want to puke at some point. Uh, yeah? Yeah, it's, it's hard. Yeah, but so you I need enjoy time it. To recharge. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, exactly. because that's what... An, so, you have... Okay, the, you, you are an introvert that has learned extrovert tendencies. You have extrovert tendencies. Now, you might not think it, but I have... I'm basically an introvert with extrovert uh, tendencies also. So, if I go out with, with friends... I notice at least for myself in the big, the first hour or two or three, I'm totally fine. It's lingao. Da, 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 da. At some point, my energy level really does dip. <laughs> no, it could be alcohol, but usually it really just does. Dip. Oh, there's always alcohol involved. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> not always. No, I'm saying, but that's a possibility. But like, it usually really does. Yes, dip yes. Oh. Towards the end of. The I mean, night. it doesn't mean you hate your friends. When no, you're... it just means that I need to step away and you know so yes. it's hard for me to answer that question who's the most extra who extroverted introverted because i i'm yeah yeah i don't know <laughs> you, you see what i'm saying i don't yes, really yes, know i guess yeah no i have had guests who like had who like kind of are scared to get in the room really why um, maybe they see something like i don't know like they can see spirits or no but like i'm <laughs> Yeah, it was well. No, but then so I realized. Oh, okay. This guy needs to be very. I need to be. Did you have like say study the principles of interviews or? I've thought about it a lot, and uh, yeah, I I didn't study it. Yeah, you just went into it and like I want to talk to people and record them or. Um, yeah. Oh, <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, there was a lot of thought give into it. So like I. I listen to a lot of podcast man and some really good interviewers. So a lot of Mark Maron, Tim Ferriss, uh, I'm blanking on some other names, but they have their own styles. Good. And then I know man, fortunately I'm old enough that I know who I am. So I'm like, okay, I'm just, I just talk like this. Yeah, no, no. You know, some people say I sound like a girl. Who cares? <laughs> My wife says I sound like a girl. Um, oh, it's not the worst thing in the world to sound like a girl. I Girls know. are awesome. I know, yeah, but I would like to sound like a man. But, but anyway, <laughs> no, but um, that's that's true. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Exactly. I'm just using that as an example. Um. But yeah, yeah, Mona Sha. Okay. I'm, I'm lost. I got lost now. <laughs> oh, we're talking about blogs and, you know, the content of your blog at this point. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is the 80 20 principle oh, of that. Okay. So for painting, for you, is the 80 20 yes, of that oh, also. Yes. And then, uh, and then, but why? Were, were you thinking about different ways to. Yeah, because um, I'm pretty sure these are like mass emails, but I get like emails from Skillshare to like, hey, do you want to teach or whatever? I'm pretty sure those are just generic emails that they send to practically everyone. But then, you know, I, I think about it and then like, I don't have good equipment and maybe I can edit maybe something like that. But you know, I don't know. That, that's not you possible. know, but the streaming thing might be a th- might that might be a real thing. Hmm. Because what's... I'll pitch you the 80-20 version okay, of the streaming again. thing. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you have your old workspace. You set it up in such a way where 
You have a camera above your... Oh, above, yeah. Okay, hand. I have the lazy pod. I guess that works. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> but it's like a... Oh, okay. What Never is mind. What's a lazy pod? It's like a thing that bites your cam- your phone and then it's like a tripod but it's less uh, like... Yeah, it's called a lazy... The gorilla, isn't that the gorilla pod? That, I think. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay no, so you can you like, let it hang there. Oh. And then... Somehow you plug it into your computer and it streams... So it's live... Or do you, you can record and then upload it and then that also works. Just do it live. Why not? Oh, that's so scary. But you don't <laughs> talk now. Don't talk. That's the 80-20 principle. You don't want, uh, you don't, you find talking uncomfortable, <laughs> don't do it. At least like if you do at some point saying, oh, this is going somewhere. Maybe I should start talking because people are asking questions. Then you could decide then and there but to the answer be- or not yeah but in the beginning you can be like you know what screw them I'm just gonna draw but and I'll <laughs> share it to the world so you do that you can stream it live I and guess then, and then you could set it up in such a way where uh, it's it's stored and it'll automatically post on YouTube or whatever and then you can go how to draw a tree house and then just add tags or or yeah then you can you do all of the tactical things about social media <laughs> but but that's the but that's the eighty twenty. I guess. I mean, you're already doing it. You're um, you're forgetting something. What about my life? I have four cats. Oh, even better. That's, they have, <laughs> oh, that have, adds like, to the cute that factor. Adds to it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hmm. So now that you have characters, you have your painting, you have you, you have you, know, you have names for your cats. I have Wasabi and Chino and Egg and Snow. You know. Wow, you, you memorize all their names, obviously. Why not? <laughs> They're my children. I'm not. I, 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 I'm not. I, I'm not a, 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 an animal person really? in general. Yes, when I'm losing subscribers after, oh, no. after I said that. Oh kidding. no, no, he was kidding. He likes dogs. He likes dogs. <laughs> no, but yeah, I'm not. I'm not an animal person at all. With your 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 kids. They're too young to have pets, or well, you know, um, my wife grew up with pets, so we were living. We had pets. We you had know pets. what that means, right? Your wife grew up with pets, so that means you're gonna have pets at oh, some yeah, point. Oh yeah, for sure. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes. I. I mean, honestly, I just ignore. I mean, I you know, hey, and then I just ignore, and then I don't do anything at all. But then yeah. you're gonna have a dog or a cat, maybe at some point. We'll see. We'll see. Having <laughs> having two kids is also. Well, you know, I read that, you know, having pets is good for their immune system. I don't know. Oh, no, for sure it is. I mean, like, uh, that's something when we do with the kids. Like, we don't... You don't, you don't, don't cuddle keep, them or... No, we don't want to keep them too clean. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> to some degree, they eat food off the floor. To some degree. Your face when I said that. Oh my God. <laughs> no, but seriously though, it's true. The same reason why the immune system when they're near the, the, the cat. Where, well, where do the cats and pet. dogs eat their food from? It's from the floor. But they, their makeup is different than humans. No, but it's the same. It's the same. It's the same theory. It's the same in, uh, in You don't have pets. No, no, I don't have pets. So um, I guess I'm um, going back to the freelancing working from home thing i guess that's one of the reasons also that it's not as bad this time because i have the pets to you know keep uh, like, me entertained and, I'm about, yeah. Uh, yeah because you're not they're like my office mates i'm curious about that actually so considering you're working from home do you do something to have like some social interaction well um there's this. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that like a short no? Is that a different way of saying not really? I mean, I actively avoid like going out. I don't know, like, I guess some people would have cabin fever. But yeah. me, I'm okay with like staying in for like four or five days at a time. Oh, that's yeah. okay. Yeah, that's fine. But then like, it's not... Sometimes you go out and buy food from the calendar. Yeah, that's enough peopling for me. That's, oh, okay. Yeah. That's, yeah. So you really like would rather be, uh, like being around people good. It's kind of samok in a way. Yeah, if I can uh, avoid it, I would. But it's not. It's not like I wanna, you know. I hate people or anything. But it's it's just you know. That's well, just you how don't it have is. the I hate people vibe. I'll I'll give you that. <laughs> that's just the vibe. You don't know. No, you don't have it. You don't have it, Gani. No, because like, uh, the reason why I ask that is. One of the things, like, another benefit from this podcast 
is that uh, there was a time, there was a, f- a few years ago, I started thinking, I'm like, wow, I'm not, it's very easy for me to just like go to a coffee shop, do work, go home, hang with my wife and kids, and then repeat that the next day. Go to a coffee shop, go home, and then that's that, that was my days. And then I was like, I'm not really meeting people anymore. That was a problem? Uh, it was for me. Like, I wanted, I wanted to be, um, I guess because also with what I do, ba, Murag, I kind of need to, I kind of need to, uh, have interaction with people. I don't know. I, there must be like several, several like l- levels of introvertness or different, like, I don't know. The, the, the characteristics of introvertness. Like, I felt like I needed to make an... I needed to put something in my life so that I could meet people on a regular basis. Because if I didn't, then I wouldn't do it. Like, it was just an introvertness so, in itself, So, uh, right? I guess, they're like, you, so you put yourself in situations where you have to interact. Yeah, like, like if, this, in a way, yeah. Because if it were only up to you, you wouldn't. Yeah, Exactly. So I like guess. I feel the same maybe but I don't actively put myself in those kinds of situations unless it's like say related to crafts so I join bazaars and uh I organize workshops and you know things like that so in a way you're kind that's kind of your that's your that's, that's your my version socialization of my yeah. yes yes oh, it could be that yeah. yeah well before we get to like the crafts the bazaars um I have a few questions Gihapon about your drawings and your paintings so I don't know based on your Instagram <laughs> account you draw a lot like a lot good do you, do you draw something every day yes there's always something I tell my my students paint every day I mean even if it's just one leaf or one line or whatever because like Muramanga check like muscle memory lang so you know if you stop drawing it's good. if you stop drawing you lose it Kind of like it would be harder to retain the anaba so in what, my experience. So what do you do with all the drawings? I scan them. Sometimes I throw them away, and some, you sometimes you throw them away. I had to, because <laughs> oh you God, know, really, yes, um, um, you know, that's that's one of the hardest. Dis- no, nah, I'm kidding. It's not hard. So. <laughs> <laughs> do you keep all your kids' drawings? Well, no, but they're my kids' drawings, <laughs> and then, you know, they don't look anywhere near as nice as yours. No! Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> they could be, like, the future, I don't know, Picasso or I don't know what. Yeah, we keep some of them. But I'll be honest with you, I have no idea where they are. Like, they, we keep them, and oh, I don't know where they cool are. there is a cool app for, like, parents to keep their kids' um, artwork. Really? I don't know what it's called. Keepy, I think. It's kind of like Instagram, so you like you know take a picture of your kids drawing, and then at some point you have an option to print, and then so you release like you album. upload it online, and that I think that I'm not sure if it's online, but that pwede siya print so nakai album at the end of the year or maybe ano ba like can you do that? Oh, okay. If like not the nog space or like, keepy, you're not. Keep- I'm not so sure. Oh, okay, I can text we'll you later if I can find. Fa- uh. <laughs> You can let me know later. I'll, I'll see if I can find it. Are they like artistically inclined, your kids? Or like... Um, no, you don't know yet. Well, my firstborn, Simanu, he likes to draw. But like, not... I wouldn't say like he goes out of his way to draw. That's the thing. <laughs> but you know, all kids enjoy scribbling and doodling. Yeah, so hard hard to say, no? Mm-hmm. Uh, he joins like this class there. Do you know... um. Uh, He's Han- in school, na? He joins a class, like oh, uh, Hannah Florendo. Oh, right. Artastic. Artastic. Yeah. So he joins Artastic. So like, I mean, you know, they could, you know he comes out, hey, look at this. And so I, we keep <laughs> those. That's what I was talking about, Gany, when you, <laughs> about the drawings. But I don't I don't know where they are. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he seems to be more inclined for like music. Uh-huh. Currently, it seems like music. Which I'm guessing makes you very, very happy. I mean, yeah, it's okay. Like, it'd be nice. It'd be cool to jam one of these days. He's three, so, you know, it's, it's no fun. No pressure. No pr- yeah, exactly. Like, he can be whatever he wants to be. No? The, I have another one, see, Matty, a one-year-old, but he's one. He, I don't know what he, 
He's not doing anything <laughs> specific yet. Yeah, okay. No? Pero mo na. So, so you just, mo ba? Pero like, but you also get a lot of commissions. Yes, yes. Um, I wouldn't be doing it if I didn't. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. yeah man, like, so. Do you have like a, do you have like a, how do you price? That's another thing that I'm sure like a lot of, uh, yeah, um, my su- my sister my sister paints with acrylic and um, she stopped because she got pregnant, etc. But um, she she started she started painting again and just last week she was asking me to ask ask my partner. <laughs> Sorry, this is so stupid. <laughs> 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 she was asking me to ask this artist I know how to price paintings oh. and um yeah that's always like an issue that's actually also an issue about um that some crafters makers face because like how do I add, how do I put a price up like a value to monetary value to something I made and Anaba so um I guess um what I learned so far is um there are so many ways to go about it. Sometimes um, I go to Etsy and mm. I do comparative like analysis. Like, um, oh, interesting! This is, yeah, this is similar work, and um, this is how much other people are selling it for. And then I try to like match or maybe under a bit. So yeah, that's one method. Another method is it mostly um, like Etsy. Sorry, before you get to your other method. So like Etsy, mostly it's it's. For the price is like a dollar price you should yes, a dollar because um I have Etsy I have an Etsy account I sell through there so that's what I use for my Etsy products. No, but I noticed your Etsy products are um, digital. Uh, digital, yes, diba? yeah, they're not actual. They're not uh, actual. Yeah, yes. But then, so like, if you if they purchase the digital version, they get like a high res copy yes, that they have yes, the option yes. to print. Yes, yes, na- they can print on their own. No, analog, as long yes. as they don't sell it. Oh, for personal use, lah. Yeah, mm-hmm. but there's other people in Etsy selling actual paintings, uh, canvas uh, mm-hmm. paintings, <laughs> actual paintings. Yes, diba? yes, yes. So, nah. you're basing you're basing pricing of that, but I guess because it's mostly U.S. European pricing, I guess then you then you adjust for a peso yes, equivalent. Yes, uh, yeah, uh, kind kind of like that. Oh. Interesting. Like that. I, that's the that's the first time I. Because um, at first when I was like, hey, I should sell digital like files of my tree houses. Like, how much do I sell them for? So nagtana ko sa Etsy like pila mga digital downloads for posters or like typography work etc. And then the usual prices were like three to five dollars. So mm, I priced yeah. it at that. So that's it. Yeah, na naasa mo palit. Arsa. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> and then they print, and then they print whatever they buy, and then sometimes they sa so, so Etsy you can add review, you can add photos to reviews, and then mag upload sila sa photo that they framed something. That's that's nice. Like, I yeah, know. I saw that. I looked at your Etsy account, man. Stalker. <laughs> huh? Stalker. Oh well, yeah. That's oh, you know research. <laughs> part of the job. <laughs> I'm kidding. So, yeah. So that's one method. That's why I told my sister you can you know go to Etsy like. Then only more of like same old level of scales and I know for some artists and yeah that's it. But um d- difficult because um I decided to sell just digital and Etsy because like the shipping thing. Yes, yeah. yeah, that's no. I, I understand why you decided do you ship to do that internationally. We do, but it's a whole process. Like they'll need to email us and yeah. It's like, it's like a special transaction. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's it's they, a pain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. really expensive. I know. Crazy yeah, expensive. I know. So, yeah, I, I, I know that's why. But you were going to mention, like, another method? Another method is um, you give yourself an hourly rate. Oh, yeah. 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 So, yeah. That. So, you decide, like, this is how much I'll, I'll I, earn I, I'm per worth hour. for an hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so like, you you give, so, like, uh, this certain painting took you this long. And yes. Anna, mm. I know some very, very, like, you know kind of artists good. They, they, they charge per inch, per square inch. Oh, yeah? Oh. For mural work, that's how much you charge typically. Oh, yeah, per for square mural work, foot. that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Per, yeah. per square foot, yeah. Mm. So yeah, because me. it's tricky. Because, like, also at the same time, if you reach a certain level, like, if you become a certain, like, uh, you have a certain level of notoriety, in a way, you can kind of just price whatever you yeah, want. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, and then people, yeah. That's, no? yeah. 
But more, I mean, not everybody reaches that that level of notoriety good at all, yeah. right? I guess, yeah. Nope. And, you know, that's not really my goal. Like, yeah. I mean, I'd want to keep painting things that, like, people pa- make people smile. You should, most of my commissions are tree houses. So I got, the, I got these e- emails like, um, I want you to paint a tree house, uh, an oak tree, but uh, the, the house is my childhood home. So, you know, things so they like send that. you a picture of the yeah, child at home. Yeah. Oh, so, those are really cute and, and you know, those are personal and uh, I like doing those. And I don't think I've ever changed, I- increased my prices in like two years. So that's oh, yeah? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So a lot of people, but so the treehouse thing, you were just doing treehouses at first, right? Yes, that's, yeah. So that's how, that's how it came out? So like, you were just I guess, guess so, yeah. And um, a lot of people responded, like, you know, like... I guess because it's like whimsical and then it reminded them of their childhood and you know things like that and or a dream like hey I wanted a tree house and I couldn't get one so like you know oh, yeah, I want a right. painting of a tree house I didn't like, want I didn't want I did, did want the tree house and did you have did. one no <laughs> yeah, same same <laughs> with me it's like I'm scared of heights uh. so I'm like hmm why do I paint something that you know won't really trigger <laughs> yeah so for the commissions, for like, w- where do they usually come from? Um, t- are you talking country-wise? Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, um, mostly U.S. So when, know, when, when, when... From like, all over, actually. When, um, yeah. So do they ask for a canvas or they just ask for the drawing, like the file? No, no, no. Watercolor, you paint it on paper. So. Oh yeah, okay, sorry, shape, okay, paper. <laughs> so yeah, that, in my head it's all the same, but canvas, paper, whatever, you know. <laughs> no, no, if it's like an original uh, commission for an original painting, I send them the actual painting. Ah, so yeah. you send it good. Yeah, but the, the good thing with watercolor is it's just paper, like I said, so you can send it like a document. It's not parcel, oh, so oh, it's oh. cheaper. Ah, okay. But it'll take like, you know, one month. Three to four weeks. Oh, yeah, but if they're willing to have something like that customized, then they're willing to wait. Said you didn't. Yeah, yeah. Mo ba? Yeah. Okay, yeah. sad. Like, I've lost maybe one painting palang sa post office. Oh yeah. And it wasn't like the local post office's um fault. It was the fault of the U.S. post office. So. Yeah, but like one painting out of how many? So more. Yeah. That's uh, it's, okay, it's not so bad, ba? Okay, yeah. That's also one thing I wanna wanna I wanna say like sending out paintings especially if it's just paper it's not so bad like i usually get like um questions like do you use dhl or fedex or whatever so i use post office it's not so bad they ah, never the post lose office things. in general yeah, yeah, yeah. the philippine post yeah, office it's okay there's a branch in robinson's fuente you don't have to go all the way to to like um the port but yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah 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 i've been there it's it's Do <laughs> it's 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 nice because you I, go through Port San Pedro and then the park, but then the actual yeah, it's it was sketchy. It seemed like we're like, oh, it's like a sir. Oh, and, like, uh, like, so there's some Robinson Yes, yes, yes. Ah. Yeah, yeah, the girls there are sorry, the girls there are nice. So, oh, ba? Yes, I, I've been using them for like a year or two. Mm. So it so those are mostly the commissions. Yeah. When did you decide to? start making uh first of all uh the segue to peregrina <laughs> no uh what is peregrina exactly uh peregrina is my it, my handmade art brand so so what what are the what what the um, what does peregrina mean peregrina is my grandmother's name oh ah, okay cool my paternal grandmother's name i guess um my brand before that was thimble cap like yeah. you mentioned and it felt you know like Related too much to sewing, and I wanted to go a to a more general direction. Like you know, I can do sewing and then painting and you know things like that. And then Peregrina, because that's like I said, that's my grandmother's name, and that's where I that's where the love for crafting started in her home. Mm. So yeah, and you know she was crafty. She she had a sewing machine. And... How come we didn't mention her in the intro when I asked you? <laughs> but where when? <laughs> Wait, well, you talked about your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, that's very uh, green. Yeah, yes. And, um, very green. And then, uh, the, I have a guava flower as my logo. Guava because, um, my other grandmother, 
she her house had like this field of guava trees and she was also crafty in fact it was her, her one of the things she always said is um a house is not a home without a sewing machine so yeah really yes do you have a sewing machine at home um in the house where i'm living in which is <laughs> where my parents grew up they did they not. have an area called the sewing area oh that's cute you know how to sew me? No, no idea. Why not? Why, why it's I... easy to learn. We don't. Well, the sewing machine's not there anymore. Okay, it's just a sewing area. Now, now there's a printer there, <laughs> <laughs> and our router. That's there also. <laughs> because, see, ba, when you think about it, ba, like your grandmother's home or your mom, they always had a sewing machine. They did so, have. Yeah, it, it was the sewing area. Kay, my grandma started uh, one of the first like ballet. Uh, oh, stuff so... here in Cebu. So whenever they would have a recital, oh, she they would make they the would, costumes. I don't know if she would make it herself, but for sure people were making the costumes, and a lot of it was, I think, made there. Wow. Uh, I remember it like it had like um like that thing that you press on the floor, so it would turn around and move. Oh yeah, for the for the needle to keep going up and down, and then they would. <laughs> turn it... You didn't learn. No. <laughs> just, but did no, you I have like learn. home act or? In school? Yeah. That wasn't offered. Uh, that wasn't uh, offered for boys. Yeah, we're boys. So, um, <laughs> you did. You know, we did, did you woodwork. Work? We had. Uh, yeah, yeah, we yeah. Had, you had woodworking and we had, um, metal work, something, something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to act all manly, but I don't even know the name you don't of, remember. The, of the. <laughs> woodworking. Of the, of the cutting thing. Of the. Saw? Well, I guess so. I think it's a saw. I'm going to say let's saw. Let's go with that. Okay. Yeah, let's go with that. Saw. <laughs> So um, yeah, yeah. So that's my brand, and right now I sell say um, paper goods with the designs of my paintings, you know. And if I find time, I'm gonna sew again. So. Hmm. So when you say paper goods, like kanang um postcards, stickers, bookmarks, notebooks. Yeah. When did you start that? These um the paper products. The Peregrina. Around a year or so ago, I think. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, I think so, it transitioned lang like naturally from thimble cap to peregrina. I just, I guess they changed the name and then the general direction of the products. That's it. So mm. yeah. Okay. W- but where do you sell peregrina? Yeah, right. I noticed you have a lot of like stockists. Yes, because I'm following know? your model. You have stockists. Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> Where Very are you? good. <laughs> are you serious? You follow? <laughs> like, hey, he does it. Like he go, he has like stuck yeah. in Ayala. Like, hmm, why, why do not, I do that? Okay, okay, yeah, kind of And um, so I sell the craft story. It's this craft store they just opened last year in Crossroads. Have you interviewed them? No, I have. You not. should. I, I should. Yes. Who should I contact? Um, Kim and Vern. Okay, I'm gonna text you. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> so I sell at Craft Story, and um, there is this other store. Bagura po nag open sa Makers at Dear Paper sa Bonifacio District. Oh, sa okay. Diet, yeah, there. Those are the local stockists, and I sell sa Common Room in Manila. In Manila, yes. I noticed in Manila there's a lot more stores I, like yes. like kanang craft Common Room is like three branches. Oh, yeah? They're opening a fourth and a fifth this year. Wow! Yes, really? I know it's like, like it's the the crafting community. Um, they get a lot of support there, and here more in a like you know nagkadaghan because of craft story and makers of dear paper and um nagkadaghan sad ang mga makers and artists and it's it's cool. It's like if you're if you want to start a handmade brand, now is the best time to do it. I say. Oh yeah. Yeah. So so you uh what was the name of the one in Manila Common Common Room. So you so in all of their branches you're there so No, just in ATC. Ah okay, uh, so start there pa and uh, you'll ATC see. ATC and Rockwell. Ah okay, that's like Second and most third of their branch. branches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. Yeah, ah okay. So how did you get the considering going back to the introvertness? I mean, um diba? like it's hard to do in a way. Like, how how did you it's get the contact? It's easier via email. Ah, so you just sent them an email. <laughs> no, it helps that um when I started, like I said, there were only a few um handmade brands doing the handmade thing, probably fifteen years ago. And one of the people I I connected with was um the sisters behind Common Room. So we've been friends for like more than a decade. 
I've never actually met them in person, but you know, I've known them for like 15 years. And so when they when they opened a branch in ATC, they contacted me like, "Hey, Miriam, pasok ka na, whatever." <laughs> they invited me, and then at first my problem was the number of stocks. You know, you you, you know, like you would always ask me like, "Hey, do you have more purses or whatever?" And then I could never reply or etc. because you know I wouldn't have time. I wouldn't have stocks. That was the problem at first. So like I guess with having stuckers kay version my inspire na go like after this I'm going to go to my printers and you know make more product make, make more stuff <laughs> yeah cuz like para I I have things to sell and I guess like because you have to pay rent you're motivated to you know sell more or you know ah so is that how it works is that how yeah, it works yeah yeah that's usually the system with common room is um you pay a rent Because, um, you pay you, rent for the space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Pay rent for the space and then some percentage of your sales. Depends uh, on okay. depends on mall or depends on store. Pay how much exactly? Yeah, because I remember there were some stores who would try to do that uh, before, no? But they weren't focusing on craft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they would say, "I'm like, okay, you can rent this space for this amount." But then I was looking at it; it doesn't make sense if your items are big. Because, because big does not necessarily mean cost more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> diba? true. Especially like stuffed toys or you know. Or like or in my case, shirts. Shirts, diba? Because you'd want you'd need to hang them. On yeah, them. so that you know, end up having like a ridiculous Renting rental. Out, yeah. But for craft, if they're just small items like you know stickers or whatever, it makes so much sense because yes. yeah, you can just rent uh, a shelf, and then if you're selling well, you rent two shelves, and then you. I love the stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I guess it also. I mean, in my experience, like, must nice shop if like um specialized good shop for makers and store. It's not like just a concept store with like clothes and RTW and you know like delicious mix. Ah, uh, ba? Dapat focus good shop on makers. Ah, ba? Like I think must tagang tao mo ha. Tagang must tagang tao mo support. Yeah, that's another. Thing that I noticed, okay, Murag, if it's like a little bit of everything, then you sell a little bit less yes. of everything. That is true. Uh, wow, you should print that on a shirt. <laughs> sell a li- <laughs> sell a little bit less of everything. <laughs> That's very, you know. So how did you get the contact? So like, ato, but I don't understand. How can you know each her? How can you know her? Because we were. Co- uh, do you like, remember email, email, multiply? Uh, Oh uh, yeah, mm-hmm. I was on Multiply. Oh, okay. So we were on Multiply, and that's where that was when we became friends. And one of the sisters, she also had a blog. So you know, also ah, crafts. You were yeah. like craft friends. Yes, like, oh, yes, yeah. yes. She's crafty. Um, um, she they own Pop Junk Club. They make okay. stuffed toys, and you know, ah. she's crafty. So yeah. So that's yes. how you connected. Yes. Okay. Yes. And then so they then they started their own store. Yes. How about the ones here in Cebu? Well, I got invited as well because, like, you know, I do workshops and then it's, it's okay. a small community. So if you know this crafter, you know this other crafter. Okay. You know, yes. Yeah, so I know is um, craft story. The owners are friends with Mark Deutsch. I am Mark. Yeah. 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 They sell there. They have stuff there. Yes. Um. Um. So when they um. Sila unang nag conceptualize the whole thing from from what I know I'm not so sure. Anyways, and um, nag make na sila list um who to invite and ana so yeah. Uh, so considering like kanang um one of the other interesting things about <laughs> about uh When when you sell your commissions, when you sell like the paintings, is that under Peregrina? Do you consider that under no, Peregrina? No, that's under the our that's under Board and Crafty. Board and Crafty. Okay, so in a way, one of the other interesting things is that one of the things you manage to do is like diversify. Yes. Your income. Yes. So the commissions is you put the you, uh, that's from the that's the art person. Oh, the art person, but also you know it's also the person who puts their time in. And then the the time you know kind of like almost like freelancing, ba? Yes. No? Yes. Yes. And yes. then the peregrina stuff is the stuff ng murag. You can kind of make they cost a lot less, I would assume, no. So you get to still have that nice 
you know, if if you're like, let's say, if I'm a fan of your work and I want to keep something of yours, and I'll be like, oh, if my commission <laughs> come, it's a little bit heavy, but I can get this. Well, yes, yes. Uh, yeah. The twenty percent bookmark. Yes. Oh, di ba? Yeah. yeah. So, so Kinda, like, you know, hitting all the spots. Yeah, but 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 but, but it's also like it's a product, so you don't need to work. You get what I'm saying? Like you're not. They're selling it, but like it's it's there and it'll sell itself at some point. That's true. I guess that's also like a natural progression if you're if you paint or if you're an artist or something. It's like you won't get commissions all that all the time. Yeah. So you, you won't have people asking you to paint this or that for them all the time. And sometimes you have personal ideas, like personal work, but then what do I do with this? And you're like, you know, people might not like it or whatever or it's too small or like you painted it on something crappy or something so you digitize it and then you turn it into a product for your brand so it's like kind of like a natural prog- progression if, you, if you're an artist like you have a brand say Happy Garage and they're you know yeah, yeah, their products because, yeah. Right? no because that's actually something that Mark's been thinking about also because obviously they have a lot of clients and they have or... the toy toy brand now yeah so yeah oh. so yeah, but in terms of like, but you've only been doing Peregrina like this last year, this year, or a year probably probably like, two years, couple of years. Yeah. So like in the ratio in terms of income, mostly commissions, pagihapon ang. I don't know. Is it fifty fifty? I'd say it's fifty fifty now because of the stockists. Oh yeah, yeah, because they're you're, actually you're in a lot they're now, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Mm, they're uh, doing pretty good. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. so like. What items sell a lot, man? Can I, like the the small ones, like you know, like oh, it's just a fifteen peso sticker, like you know, that's not gonna affect my budget too much. So yeah. Oh uh, yeah, like they sell quite a bit. I guess it's like the eighty twenty principle all over again. So, oh, kinda yeah, yeah, that is. Oh, there's like a theme. There's a theme. This podcast <laughs> theme is the uh, eighty twenty Pareto Pareto print. I don't know how to. Sp- I don't know it as Pareto actually. Eighty twenty <laughs> principle. So yeah, that and um, kind of show like the bookmark designs. Um, the they're just my paintings that I do, and then I scan them, and then I turn them into bookmarks or stickers or postcards. So yeah, those those sell. Mm, but you're still joining bazaars. Yes, I yeah. Any anything coming up soon? Or? I'm joining. I was supposed to join the this the Pride Bazaar, the Park Mall, but then I had this other thing. I'm joining the Maayo well anniversary Bazaar thing. Yeah, the Bazaar is okay, I said, yeah, Japan. Yes. Like they're okay. A... Like, especially if, like, Christmas market. Oh, yeah, yeah Grabby. Yeah, 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 yeah. Grabby and Christmas. Why did you stop organizing them? The Bazaars? Mm. They were so... Tight. Tight. It's so It's tough, like, tight. I did that for when I was with Craft oh, Yeah, you were organizing them. Yes, right? I was organizing them. Yeah. It was fun. Like, you know, it was like, it was like lingaw to to you know organize people and then but then you know, it's couple eventually it's not anymore so yeah well it's it's hard to do well number one Unya, it's it's really a lot of time and effort and then I found that although we like in terms of yeah it just wasn't it wasn't worth the time and effort that was being put in it. So they're like, that's why kudos kayo for me to, um, Subo lagi. Subo. Subo. Mercado, like, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, kudos to them, Kim, where they've been able to keep it going, but, but and it's nice. Because from personal experience, it's not sustainable, maybe, but maybe it is, but, you know, they're doing it so well. Yeah, yeah no, them are good. They've, they've figured out a way to, like, make it sustainable. Mm. Actually, like, the ones that we used to do, the 032 ones, kanang profitable man siya. We made money, but like, it the the money that we made was not uh, worth the effort. It's that much effort, like True. in the end of I the day. I guess it helps if you have like volunteers. And... For sure, for sure. Yeah. I mean, if you keep it going, then pwede na, 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 ka na. Oh, like you can hire people. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I think I got the most that I got out of it was meeting meeting Same. the people. Same. For, in the yeah, bazaar, yeah, yeah. really. I know. But Same it's still worth story. joining a bazaar. Yes. I think so. Oh, depending yeah, on which you, bazaar. Because you don't, if you're under 032. Um, well, we do. Well, if it's like a Christmas one, mm. usually, mga mm. Christmas dapit, ana, mm. it depends. So, some bazaars are better, some bazaars are not. No? Yeah. So, it really just depends. It depends lang yun. Yeah. No? You mentioned your cats. What do they do when you paint? 
um, they share my electric fan. <laughs> when I paint, um, well, you know, they walk around, they drink my painting water. You know. They drink the painting water? Yeah. It's not, it's not poison, it's not toxic, so. So <laughs> does their poop come out colored? No. no okay. I don't know why I'm not hearing in my head, Nikki. No. Why not? Why, why wouldn't it come and out colored? Why, and why would I check my cat's poop closely? Ah, no, because they, ah, uh, because they, they, they dig and then they bury it, right? Cats are clean. Yes. I mean, sure, I, they have a litter box and I clean it every day, but then I don't look at them closely, so. Unless, like, they're sick, so you have to examine. So. Oh, lalang. I wonder, <laughs> diba? Like, wouldn't it, like... Anyway, I don't know. I don't know why I thought of that. <laughs> no? So, yeah. um, I. It's nice to have companions, so... Oh, yeah. So, imagine if you were streaming it, and then, and then, and like, a no. cat man walks like, oh, by. Oh, cute! And then, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> diba? And ruins the whole thing, but, you know. Has that happened? Yeah, you know, <laughs> sometimes I get like paw prints that you can't erase, oh, and yeah. you know watercolor paper is is expensive. So, oh wow, well, well, right. <laughs> anyway, you're used to it. So, kind of like kind of like the streaming that after that you upload it. I guess that could work. Cause, like, and then you don't be, worry about it, now. I usually post like Instagram stories of just my cats doing their cat things. And, you mm. know, I get like heart reactions or you know from the cats. From, from other, other people. From other cat people. For the yes. cats. For, for the, the cats. cats. Yeah, yeah. yeah mm-hmm. From cat from cat people. Yeah. Oh. Um, for you, so you're doing this like full time now? I'd say like for the longest time I was like in denial. Like what am I doing? Why am I momming for, you know? I guess this is what I do. Because, you know, millennials are multi-hyphenate. I'm kidding. So, it's like you. I mean, do... You'd say you're a cyclist, are you? Like, do you join competitions or? Uh, I'm joining one, my ah, first one in. You're in very first. Two weeks. Yeah, the, so the one that Chiril is. Oh, organizing. because of her. Yeah, well, not because of her. Like, I found out. I found out. I was interested in it, and then I found out that she's one of the organizers. Oh, okay. Here, local. So, yeah, local. It's called Cebu Epic. Oh, cute. Yeah. Uh, like like Cheryl, I I'm not so sure. Does she have a nine to five? She does not, right? No, I don't think she has. So she's she a, has. She's, she's part a styling of, um, gig. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's part then, of Cuckoo Cloud. And uh-huh. then that's it. Or uh, does she have like freelance? I'm blanking. Whatever? So she does Cuckoo Cloud. Uh, this se- with Giselle. With Giselle, uh, I'm blanking on what else she does. But yeah, she does. I should know. I'm blanking. Yeah. Um. I guess you're asking key. very hard questions. <laughs> <laughs> because, like, you know, the memory thing no, is not like, working. <laughs> but you're right. There's a lot of, like, we're all hyphens. Yeah, like, you're right, uh, Diva. It's like the hustle generation. So I guess you could say I'm doing this full time. I'm doing the art thing and then I'm doing the copywriting thing. So. Oh, yeah. What kind of copywriting? I'm this curious. and that, you know. Usually digital marketing content. Mm. So, you know, the usual, the, the thing that I've been doing for the last decade or so. So more on that. It's like, so they ask you to write an article, that sort of thing. Yeah, it's Japan. Yeah, it's Japan. Is it? Yes. Oh. If I get free time, maybe I'll start. Oh, no, no. I'm going to start a project. It's too much. I just did this 525 thing. Um, it's Warren. It's a tr- it's a attributed to Warren Buffett, but I don't really know if it's truly him. So there's a story where... He goes to his driver. Hey, you've been driving for me for like 10 years now. I don't feel like I'm doing a good job because you're still you're my still driver. You're still a driver. Uh, so he told the driver, so what are the 25, or write down the 25 most important things. Oh, yeah, that. You know what it is, oh, right? And, yeah. then, and then he goes, okay, then circle the most important five. Five, five, five. Yeah. And then he tells the driver, Focus on those five things, and then the other twenty things, don't avoid them at all costs. Don't do them at all, no. Uh, so like when you f- once you accomplish that one thing, then you can like look at your other twenty things. But like first, figure out how to accomplish the first five that you wanted. So like it's an exercise in and writing is not for you. For me, oh no! Right now, no, no. Like I'll daydream about like. 
writing a book. But yeah, that is so. Why is that not part of your five if you daydream about it? No, I daydream also about bike packing <laughs> in um, through Europe with a cat. I'm kidding. Do not get there or whatever. But you know, I don't. I don't That's not really it. important. Huh? That's not really important. Or... Working about like it's in my twenty five, but I'm not gonna do it. I guess. Yeah. You know? So, I don't want to take too much of your time. We've been talking for a while, huh? Um, yeah. Oh, hi, Nudia. Now I'm gonna puke. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything you want to uh, um... talk about? No, really, that's it. Like, you know, oh, I want to say thank you to everyone who who, su- who support, supports um, the local maker community. Because, you know, people are awesome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> people are generally quite awesome. Yeah. Even uh, though I avoid them. <laughs> <laughs> they are, you are. Not, not awesome enough not to avoid them. <laughs> No, but no, no, also, no, they're, they're great, they're great. <laughs> like the, I you meant know, people in general, and not, 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 sorry, not people who support the local, I meant people in general, that's a joke. Of. Yeah, they're great, they're great. The me avoiding thing, that's a me problem, <laughs> that's not a people problem, so you know, there you go. <laughs> well, uh... Miriam, thank you so much. Thank you. I hope you got something out of this. Oh, it's fun. I actually learned something, you know, from the podcast technical aspect talk. So thank From you. From this this conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah? Oh yeah. well um uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> I'm glad I could help. <laughs> I'm glad I could help in your episode. <laughs> Where can people find you online? I'm I'm on Instagram and Facebook. Bored and crafty, like you said. Okay. That's it. And my brand, Peregrina. So, it's on Instagram also yes, and Facebook. Instagram and Facebook, yes. Peregrina. I'll yes. link uh, all those in the show notes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Miriam was a treat to talk to. I found myself laughing as I re-listened to the episode. I rarely have that introvert-extrovert conversation. It was good to bounce around that idea. So this was a fun one. Miriam, thank you so much for be- for doing the episode. Thank you, Cube Gallery, for sponsoring the podcast. The music from this podcast is Piano March by Audio Nautics. If you... Yes, you, the one still listening to this episode. If you want to directly support the podcast, head on over to patreon.com slash 032. We're currently at $30 a month and we only need $70 more to reach our first goal. So the first goal is uh, because 032 Conversations currently uses royalty-free music for the intro and outro. And once we reach $100 a month, it will allow us to pay a local musician or artist for their music. So, you know, we can, we can, uh, what's the word? I don't know. I'm blanking on the word, but we, we can pay them money, actual money, so that we can use their music on the podcast. I know there are ways for me to do this for free, especially since I know a lot of the musicians, but. I want to I wanna make sure that they get actual hard cold cash. So, yeah, the if you support the Patreon, uh, then that's one way for us to do that. Uh, if you head over to patreon.com slash 032, that's a way to support the podcast. You also get exclusive content. And depending on what tier you choose to support, we have like three tiers, like a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars. Those are all, by the way, convertible to peso you can just put in your credit card anyway if you do five or ten you'll get free merchandise exclusive you'll get free merchandise exclusive to 032 patreon members and uh, if you're a little low on cash but still want to help totally understand just share this episode on social media that's it see you next tuesday thank you for listening